Warm greetings from the regional team for Southern Counties Baptist Association. A few weeks ago I was very struck by a picture of a sculpture that's in Magdalen College, Oxford by David Wynne and it's called Noli Me Tangere which in Latin means do not cling to me, do not hold on to me and it's representing that incident in John 20 where Mary Magdalene distraught because she'd wanted to tend Jesus's body and his grave, discovers that the tomb is empty and for her that didn't mean resurrection, it meant that someone had stolen or moved his body. She approaches the gardener or who she thinks is the gardener saying where have you laid him and then gets back to her astonishment Mary unmistakably Jesus calling her by name and then in her Recognition that this is the rabbi, her teacher, who is uh, re resurrected, who's alive. She reaches out to embrace him. And it's at that point that Jesus says, do not hold on to me, for I have yet to return to ascend to the Father. And this sculpture captures beautifully Jesus acting out, pointing head heavenwards that he's still to ascend to Father, and Mary wanting to connect and to embrace him. In fact, they do an elbow bump. And at that point, it becomes extraordinarily poignant for us in these days when we're so missing being able to express our affection for family and for friends and to receive their love and care back as well. So it seems a bit harsh and hard that Jesus says this, do not hold on to me. Surely of all the things she wanted to do at that point, it would be to hold on to him. But she's not to, and she can't, and it's not going to be a reversal. And the halcyon and glory days of being able to be around him and accompany him and support him on his mission, those days are not coming back. There's going to be fresh days, and they're going to look different. And it's precisely because Jesus wants her and the disciples to have a future and to be able to be part of what God is doing for the future that he needs to say, don't try and keep me as you once knew me, all that we can celebrate and enjoy forever, but be open to what's opening up before you. So Jesus needs to complete his journey from God back to God from father back to father and in his ascension he opens up the sort of relationship that he's always enjoyed and embodied and taught was possible for his disciples and so Mary's new future is to go to the disciples straight away and tell them tell my brothers I'm going back to my father and your father my God and your God you can see it for yourself in John 20. It's not much of a roadmap, is it? There's still much uncertainty about where all this is leading. What will it be like if Jesus is not physically present? How will all that he set in motion be continued? No wonder Mary wanted to get back to how things were, almost certainly. And so it's just as well that later in John 20, we're told that Jesus once more appears amongst the disciples who are still fearful and anxious. Rumours of life and resurrection have not stopped their uncertainty or their anxiety. But he comes and says, peace be with you. He shows them his hands and his side and they rejoice when they see him just as Mary had done. And then Jesus says, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Again, it's not the most developed roadmap in the world. But Jesus says to them, not only is my God your God, my Father your Father, but also the future that I've begun is one that you'll continue into. And as Father has sent me, so I send you. In a way, 
it's the deepest thought and the most profound understanding of all. Whenever we spend any time thinking about how Jesus was in our world, his self-giving, his compassion, his kindness, all of that is more than enough to be going on with in terms of giving of ourselves. When we think of how deeply he dug into his relationship with his Heavenly Father, not least as he approached the cross, we're reminded of what it means to depend on the things that really matter and to ask the question that many of us are asking at the moment, which is, what will we go back to? What will we let go of? What will we continue to cling to and hold on to? And what will we move on from? And of course, in terms of this roadmap, there's something very specific that Jesus says here, which is, However and whatever it looks like to be sent into the world as I've been sent into the world, one thing in particular to remember, that you're to be communicators of grace, you're to embody what it means to be welcomed into a relationship with God, to know God's forgiveness. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So in these days of huge uncertainty, the question is, what am I depending on and who am I depending on? Where am I digging down deep? And what will I let go of? Because actually it doesn't enable me to actually really go deeper with who God is. What will I let go of? Because actually it doesn't enable me to live out this calling to be sent into the world full of compassion and grace and kindness and uh, truth and love as he was. Perhaps those two questions really are worth pondering. Who and what am I depending on? What are my priorities? And what, for me, am I being asked to let go of, not to cling on to? And so here heaven and earth meet. Here Jesus lifts us to heaven and heaven stoops to us and it continues to be the case still it is the case that God is wanting to join heaven and earth and change your life and change the lives of those that we serve and that we care for around us and so we pray the great kingdom prayer the prayer wanting that lots of people should get this and that heaven and earth might be joined. Let's pray it together and we'll use the traditional words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.